So fling wide, you heavenly gates. Prepare the way of the risen Lord. The Apostle John was on the island of Patmos. He was in prison for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he heard a sound behind them. And he said, I looked. And there was a door standing open in heaven. And I heard a voice, which was like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I will show you the things which must take place. That's what we need, my friends. Do the heavenly perspective of the things that are going on in the world around us. The things that the Word of God foretold us would come to pass. Those things which must take place. Those things which are taking place even now. That is what this broadcast is all about. Discussing the issues of the day. Discerning the times in which we live. From a biblical perspective and world view. Good afternoon and greetings and welcome everybody from all across the fruited plain. And all around the spherical globe. Andy White here and what you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind and soul. And thanks for tuning in for this week's special edition of Open Up the Doors. For those of you who normally watch me live on, on Facebook Live, I'm not live streaming today as I am doing this broadcast from an undisclosed location called my home because the Faith FM studio is still under quarantine due to the coronavirus and uh, Pastor Doug and his family, as you well know, had con uh, contracted the disease, but they're recovering and they're doing better, and our prayers are still with them and their household. But this broadcast is actually being pre-recorded uh, from my home. Like I said, it's kind of a, a new experience for me here, too. I've, I've never done this from my home, but thanks for tuning in nonetheless. And we are, of course, streaming the FM broadcast on the Internet at HamptonsChristian.com. If you're outside of the Faith FM broadcast area, you can, of course, listen to Faith FM 24-7 by downloading the free app. You can find the Faith FM app at the Apple Store or the Google Play Store for whatever your particular uh, platform needs may be. All right, so I think I've got you know, all my preliminaries out of the way. And as I always struggle how to begin a, begin a broadcast because there's always so much going on, but let me begin here. Let me begin by saying with a heartfelt, uh, just heartfelt, I do hope and pray that you're healthy and weathering out the storm, walking in faith and hope and love, despite the constant media barrage of panic and fear and a deluge of misleading and conflicting reporting that the media is doing. And that's exactly what they are mostly doing, honestly. But it's really led me to observe uh, this past week, past several days, that the fear levels of Christians and church people, I'm not even talking about those who don't know the Lord, but Christians, I see their fear levels just rising in direct proportion to the media's obsessively negative and apocalyptic reporting. Just the other day, I was talking with a pastor friend of mine, you know, he conveyed to me saying that the congregation, his people right now, that they're very scared and fearful and just in, they're just in need of a hopeful and comforting message. And without a doubt, I, I agree with that. It's, it's, it is what it is. But I cannot think of a more positive and hopeful message than the message of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Like I say all the time, we've got the greatest message in the world, folks. A message that says that there is far more to your life than this world and its temporal existence. This alone is our only true, our only true hope is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, at the, at the grave site, the grave site of, of Lazarus, a beloved friend of Jesus, Jesus went to the graveside and his sisters were mourning. 
his broken-hearted sister. And you know what the Lord says to her over in John chapter 11. He said, in, in, in the brokenness of that moment, in the sorrow of that moment, Jesus gave one of the most hopeful responses that really is the underpinning of our Christian faith. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, friends, he alone is the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in him will never die. And obviously, Jesus meant those who believe in him will never spiritually die. And that is to be cast out of his presence, out of the presence of God into a state of eternal separation from God. That's called the second death. And it's tremendously and eternally far worse than our natural death. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asked. And that seems to be the question of this hour. Do we really believe this? Do we really believe all the promises of God that he's given us in his word? Because let me get back to the context of the conversation that I was having with this friend of mine, because there's a reason I said all that I've just said, because in the context of the conversation, what was really being implied, without getting into the entire conversation, what was really being implied was that was my friend was saying that people needed more of a, a positive message of happy talk. You know... <clears throat> Sometimes people have a misperception of me. That's probably putting it lightly. But sometimes some people say to me, you talk too much about God's judgment and all this doom and gloom kind of stuff. Well, it's true. I do talk a lot about these perilous days in which we live and the coming judgment because both the Bible and Jesus himself talked a lot about judgment and persecution and tribulation and the last days. So when people say things like that to me, I know that it's really coming from a place of discomfort on their part because it challenges their belief system and worldview. It challenges a faulty or deficient understanding of the holiness and the nature of God that they might have because... The fact is that Jesus himself actually talked more about hell and the judgment of God than he ever did about heaven. So let me ask a question. Was Jesus a doom and gloomer? Was he more about doom and gloom and judgment than he was about eternal life? Of course not. That would be a ridiculous conclusion to come to. But Jesus knew that we wouldn't understand the one without the other. And he knew the difference between a true hope and a false hope. And he understood that you certainly need to warn about the one and not the other. You really don't need to convince anyone in heaven that heaven's going to be a wonderful place. Just about everyone thinks that's where they're going when they die, no matter what they believe or how they live. Because, you know, hey, God is love. That's the comforting word. God is love. Now, that's real happy talk. Everybody's going to heaven because we've already been through hell. You've heard that saying before, right? That's happy talk. Except that's not really the case. That happy talk might make you popular, it might win you many friends, but it's a false hope. Brothers and sisters, there is a false hope, and there is a true hope. And a false hope will leave you with very tragic consequences in the end. Now, understandably, people may want to cling 
to their false hope because they're soothing and they're self-comforting. But you know, Jesus comes along and he says, no, that's not so. He comes along and he pops the balloon of false hope. He completely destroys the narrative that says we're all God's children and we're all heaven bound. Jesus comes along and he puts conditions on it. He says, no, that idea that everyone is going to heaven. No, he says to the idea that we are essentially good people and we're all God's children. Jesus comes along and says, no, you're not all God's children. But Jesus says, and the word says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Jesus stands up in the crowd and declares, who is my mother and who are my brothers? For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Yep. <laughs> Jesus comes along and utterly demolishes the conventional wisdom of the world. And he says, don't think that you have a natural born right to the kingdom of God. No, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel, Jesus said, that you must be born again. So the point I'm trying to get at here is that there's, there's a false hope and there's a true hope. Not all hope is the same. There are false hopes that lead to death, and there is a true hope that is full of life. And that was precisely John the Baptist's message as he prepared the way of the Lord. John came out of the wilderness, and he said, Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Folks, I will never peddle empty happy talk. I understand that we need encouragement all the time. I do believe that, that every so often I bring forth a, 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 a word that's meant because I understand where we're at. I always bring forth, I try to always bring forth a word of encouragement. I always try to bring forth the whole counsel of God. I always try to bring forth the balance that's in the scripture. Just a couple of weeks ago, I specifically did a broadcast called The Lord, My Refuge, where I talked about hiding in him and dwelling under the shadow of his wings, that whole Psalm 91 state of mind, the promises that we find in Psalm 91. I, I shared that two weeks ago expressly, as I said, for the purpose of, of building up your faith, of letting your faith rest in, a, in the true promises of God, a true hope, like Jesus said at Lazarus' tomb, do you believe this? I'm never going to give you a message of false hope. I'm never going to waste your time, or mine for that matter, with shallow, happy talk. But I want to talk to you about the real hope that we have, the reality of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Because there, we can't, we cannot put our hope in the things of this world. Absolutely, that's a false hope. When we start hoping in the government, when we start hoping in our politicians, if we start hoping in, in the, the machinations of men, I'm sorry, we're going to be disappointed. And that will lead to real despair. It really will. Abraham, the father of our faith, 
in hope, believed the promises of God. And the Bible says he was made righteous because he believed God. I want to talk more about Abraham, the father of our faith, and the true hope that works for us when I come back. But I want to play this tune right now. Take my first break here. Tune from Crossing Jordan. Local worship team from a local church here on Long Island called All Things New. Stick around. I'll be right back, folks. Crossing Jordan with all things new. As I said at the top of that song, Crossing Jordan is a worship band, worship team from a local church here on Long Island, Heart of Worship over in Lindenhurst with Pastor Mark Deloso. And Open Up the Doors wants to extend its very deep and sincere condolences to Pastor Mark and Laura Deloso and all the Heart of Worship church family over there in Lindenhurst over the loss of their daughter Gina Marie just last week. Gina Marie was and still is a young and beautiful worshiping warrior of the Lord Jesus Christ who lost her battle with cancer last week but she won her victor's crown of life 
And she is still continuing her ministry of worship in the presence of her Lord and King. So I do want to once again offer my sincere condolences to you all over there. Pastor Mark, and Laura, it was a great loss. I know your heart, sir. You're, you're heartbroken. But our loss is indeed heaven's gain. And I wanted to play that tune for you guys in honor of you and know that we are standing with you and praying with you and just uh, wrapping our hearts and our arms around you in sympathy in the spirit. Well, if you're just joining in right now, welcome back, folks. This is Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 to 93.3, and that peak in WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And we're dealing with a lot of spiritual warfare, folks, as you well know, but I am here penetrating the unseen powers of darkness by simply speaking the light of truth, sending powers and principalities into frothy fits of frenzy. But I also have to say this, that the views expressed by the host of this show, namely me, are molded by the word of God along with the empirical evidence, both experiential and observational, which is lived out by me on a daily basis and may not necessarily be the views and opinions of Faith FM. So I want to make that disclaimer right now, but I do, obviously, as I do every week, appreciate the fact that the people here and the folks here at Faith FM allow me to share on this Christian radio station from the east end of Long Island. So let me get back on track here with... uh, the things that I have swimming around in my spirit. You know, the other day I heard someone say, I'm hoping against hope that I won't get the coronavirus. And I thought, what an odd statement. I'm hoping against hope. I've heard that phrase before, but it just sounded contradictory to me. I don't know. Are you saying you hope to get it? Well, of course, that's not what they were saying. But why would somebody say, I'm hoping against hope? Why don't, why don't you just say, I hope I don't get it? I mean, it sounded rather defeatist. <laughs> You're hoping against hope. I'm hoping for hope. No. It sounded like you were saying it was inevitable to get it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Why would one hope against hope? I, I've always... Personally, I've always found that saying a bit confusing, honestly. Why would one hope against hope? I'm sure you've heard that that phrase before, that colloquial saying. But that saying actually does find its roots in Romans chapter 4. And if you see it in the context there, it becomes clearer as to what it actually does mean. Over in Romans, we read that Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed. Contrary to hope, in hope, believed. So that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. Hoping against hope, in its biblical context, is a hope that is placed in something, or in this case, someone, God. It's a hope that is completely outside of you, completely outside of what you are able to do in your own strength. It's an unmitigated trust in the promise of an almighty and faithful God. And Abraham who contrary to hope, in hope, believed. What did he believe? Remember up in the first portion of this broadcast, I shared with you when Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus, and he said to Mary and the others around him, I'm the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? You see, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted for him as righteousness. What did he believe? He was fully convinced that God 
had pr- was able to perform that which he had promised. Therefore, there is a whole slew of consequences and ramifications when you walk in that incredible hope, being fully convinced in who and what God is. You see, the, the, the consequences of that is what we read again in, 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 in Romans here. Abraham not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead in a sense, since he was about 100 years old. He did not consider the deadness, we're told, of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him as I said a moment ago, for righteousness. I like this here. It says Abraham did not consider his own body already dead. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. You see, what's being conveyed here, and what I want to convey to you, is that a true hope in God doesn't deny reality. A true faith in God doesn't deny reality. It just knows that God is able to supersede it. Abraham didn't deny the reality of the situation that he couldn't produce in himself a child at his age, that Sarah couldn't produce in herself a child at her age. He didn't deny that reality. But who contrary to hope, in hope, believed. Hoping against hope, he believed. Because he simply did not consider it relevant in light of God's word and his promise to him. My situation, it is what it is. I'm old. I'm past childbearing age. That's the reality. But it's not relevant. (laughs) It's not relevant in the light of God's word and God's promise. This is what I'm trying to get at in in this broadcast today, folks. When I hear people talking about, you know, oh, we need to be giving a hopeful message. And like I said at the top of the broadcast, of course I agree with that. Totally agree with that. But when it comes down to a hopeful message... I think it boils down to what your definition and idea of hope is. You see, I'm really very, very much full of hope. I'm I'm one of the most hopeful people I know. I know that surprises some of you because you got a misperception and a mischaracterization of who you think I am. But I am very much full of hope. I'm a walking bundle of hope. It's just that I don't put my hope in this world. I don't put my hope in our government. I don't put my hope in the political system. I don't put my hope in anything that man can possibly do when it comes right down to what this life is ultimately about. I place my hope, and I want to encourage you to place your hope fully upon the grace of God that will appear when Jesus Christ returns. I place my hope, and I want to encourage you as well, to place your hope fully upon the promises of God that are stored up for us in him. Not denying the crisis of the present moment, not denying the reality of the situation, not considering its relevance to our eternal hope because it is irrelevant. In this world, Jesus said, you will have tribulation. I've shared this message for several weeks now. 
In this world, you'll have persecution. In this world, you'll have tribulation. In this world, you'll have affliction. In this world, you'll have sorrow. And of course, in this world, you'll have good times too. But this world is ultimately not our home. Now, to be clear, I want to emphasize it once again. I absolutely do believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. As David exclaimed in Psalm 27, David said, I would have lost heart. A lot of people are losing heart right now. But I want to encourage you, don't lose heart. David said, I would have lost heart. Why had I not believed? You see, the, the, the challenge to us today is, do we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Do we believe that God is able to perform that which he has promised? David said, I would have lost heart had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I'm quite sure I am quite sure that the context of what David was saying in Psalm 27, he was talking about this life. But you know what? You can extrapolate that as well to an eternal hope. If you understand that the land of the living is ultimately our eternal home. Remember what, what Jesus said when discussing the resurrection with the Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection? Jesus said to them over there in Luke chapter 20, verse 38, he said to them, for he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. In him, for those who are in him, we're in the land of the living. <laughs> whose report will you believe? Brothers and sisters, whose report will you believe? I know that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And even if I die, as Jesus said, yet I will not die, but I shall live because I have an eternal hope that completely transcends the, the, the temporary situation of this world and its system. Are you with me? Well, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, to make you understand and make you realize where, where and what your true hope is, and to, and to, and to remind you of it, because I, I think some people, because they're taking their eyes off of Jesus and they're putting their eyes on the storm, you know, they're, they're like Peter, they're, they're, they, they, they took their eyes off Jesus and now they're floundering around in the midst of the storm. Get your eyes back on Jesus. Whose report will you believe? Well, with that segue, I do want to speak about a few of the things that are going on in the news, the news reports, and actually bring some of the hopeful news to some degree. You know what? <clears throat> I was really struggling with this a bit because, you know, I never, never know where to go. I only got an hour broadcast, and it, sometimes it's very hard to discern – or, or decide, I should say, which way to go. And I've got a pile of stats and facts and studies sitting right here in front of me right now. But after going through some of this stuff for several weeks now, after going through many of these things already in the last several broadcasts in numerous ways, all these conflicting studies and reports, and there are conflicting studies and reports. And one of the things that's one of the things that really uh, get under my skin is how the media, the mostly for the most part, the media cherry picks only the negative aspects, only cherry picks the apocalyptic aspects, but they're not really reporting on a lot of the positive uh, studies that are contradicting some of the narratives that are out there. I'm just saying all this for, for, for this reason. There are indeed conflicting studies and reports, but I'm not going to get bogged down with them today because I've come to a place of realizing, really, that most people, sad to say, just don't seem to care about that for some unknown reason, honestly. 
their their emotional feelings, and that's what we're dealing with in so many cases. Our emotional feelings so easily overcome any appeal to reason and to facts at, and the facts at hand. And sadly, the reality is, is that emotion trumps facts, no pun intended. But that's not the way it should be, but that seems to be the reality. And here's the thing. The media knows this. The governing authorities with an agenda understand this very well. They know they can manipulate the masses through their emotions. That's why it's so easy to manipulate the masses, because we allow our emotions to overcome our reason. Now, do you think the media, and especially the leftist media, really want to instill any hope. No, they want ratings, and they want to keep the the hysteria stoked up. They They don't want to instill any hope, most definitely not. Look what their resistance to hydroxychloroquine has been the last few weeks. You know, a few weeks, few weeks back, President Trump was putting out the hope of hydroxychloroquine as being an effective treatment against the coronavirus. But But the mindless twits, and that's what they are, folks, the mindless twits over in the leftist media were too busy Trump hating and too busy ridiculing and mocking and impugning him for putting out what they called a false hope. But he wasn't putting out a full soap. He was looking at, at, at the data that was coming into him and his coronavirus team. But these hopelessly mindless imbeciles over on those networks who are truly the, truly the enemia of the truth, and they are truly the enemies of the people, and anybody with any sense needs to stop listening to them. They just, they just need to stop watching these people over there because they're nothing but chills and propagandists for their worthless and godless agenda. But this hydroxychloroquine ha- is being tested on a wide scale now. And there are, they are finding good news. There is a, 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 a great good news and greater reason for hope since that Hope is the key word for today's broadcast. When Dr. Fauci, who leads the coronavirus team, was asked if he would use the hydroxychloroquine cocktail, which is hydroxychloroquine along with zithromycin and zinc, it's called, you know, a Z-pack, he answered that he would definitely uh, use it himself. Um, France reversed its previous ban on the drug because they're doing the studies. This thing is working. It's working. But, you know, here's the thing that is really upsetting and and what really feeds into the things I'm trying to to convey to you. The moment that that, uh, Trump um, spoke about the hope he had in hydroxychloroquine, the political left immediately went into, you know, a rage. And we got several governors, uh, Governor Whitmer in Michigan, banning uh, doctors from prescribing it. Now, who are they to ban anything? I don't know if they, if they have recanted, but there are governors in four states who are telling people and telling pharmacies and doctors not to prescribe the uh, hydroxychloroquine. Is that a people that, that are looking for hope? Is that a people that are dealing with facts, uh, even, even while they accuse the president of not dealing with facts? No. Last week... Uh, Rachel Maddow over there at, on, on, on MSLSD was saying how the, uh, the hospital ship would never be sent to New York. She was saying how, where is it? I got it right here. Let me find this report. Yeah, I want to get the quote here because this is, this is just priceless. Because just last week, Maddow was saying, quote, there is no sign that the Navy hospital ship and the president, uh, um, I'm sorry, there is no sign that the Navy hospital ship that the president made such a big deal of, the comfort and the mercy, there is no sign that they'll be anywhere on site helping any, 
helping out anywhere in the country for weeks yet, Mao Dao said on March 20th. Quote, the president said when he announced that those ships would be put into action against the COVID-19 epidemic, he said one of those ships would be operational in New York Harbor by next week. That's nonsense, she said. It will not be there next week. Well, lo and behold, it was there 10 days later. He was only off by, you know, a couple of days. These people, folks, are nothing but smear merchants over on the left, trying to undermine our country and your hope. For the life of me, I do not understand how these miscreants have any kind of viewing audience whatsoever. It really makes me want to scream out, whose report will you believe? I mean, I see posts and posts of Psalm 91 memes, and yet... Despite the fact that I see reams and reams of Psalm 91 memes, yet I see more people walking in fear than acting like they actually believe it. The Word of God is not mere poetry filled with fables and hyperbole as some would have you to believe. You either trust Him and put your hope in His Word, believing that He is able to perform that which He has promised, or you can trust the news reports and put your hope in them. But I do find it astounding how for the last several years, the church kept screaming fake news and over the agenda-driven media, and rightly so. But now all of a sudden, they're buying into what the lying, fear-mongering, apocalyptic, lying stream media is trying to sell them. But perhaps that is a discussion for another day. I'm going to take another break. Stick around, folks. Here's a tune by Casting Crowns, If We Ever Needed You. And we do. We need him more than ever. I'll be right back. The fusion of heart, mind, and soul. Open up the doors with Andy White here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in that peak, WEGQ 91.7 in quad. Hey folks, thanks for joining in to this week's edition of Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM. Hey, yeah, and if you would like to partner with us, please visit us at our website over at hamptonschristian.com, and if you'd like to become a full-time sponsor if you'd even like to underwrite this broadcast please visit the uh, website and it would really be so greatly appreciated of course we could use your support this is a commercial free not-for-profit uh, fm station and we are supported solely and completely by your love offerings so if you'd like to partner with us again visit us at hamptonschristian.com also by the way while you're here, if you've never liked my Open Up the Doors Facebook page, go on over to facebook.com slash faithfm91.7 and please like the page. I'd like to, you know, have you join join us and get on board with what we're doing here at Open Up the Doors. And also, one more plug before I get into some of my closing thoughts for today's broadcast. I do have a, a YouTube channel as well, and I really want to encourage you to please go and visit and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you go on Google or if you have YouTube, you just put, go in the search there on YouTube or Google and type in Andy White, open up the doors, and you'll find my channel there. And I really want to encourage you to uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, we have all the uh, videos of all the archived broadcasts that, that we do and other things of interest that might interest you as well. Please leave some comments there. I'm really trying to get the audience uh, and the subscriptions uh, built up over there on YouTube. So when you do subscribe, also click that little bell. That will give you notifications of when we do upload uh, these broadcasts and other videos that, that we do produce and get out there. You know, we, we just want to get the Word of God out there in every facet, in every way we can. Time's running out, folks, and we need to be about our father's business so again please subscribe there subscribe support 
We're just making the appeal here. You pray about it and see what God would have you to do. Now, let me get back to some of the things I was I, I have in my spirit here. You know, in the last in the last block, I was kind of getting off on on the left stream media because you know what they get under my skin, and they really they really do exasperate me. But you know what? Uh, maybe I shouldn't give them any kind of uh, airplay. I don't know. I don't know. I just can't help myself sometimes. But there's a lot of good people out there that I do want to mention that are helping people right now and reaching out to people, bringing groceries to to elderly people who were shut in. And the other day, I got something that really impressed me from my congressman, uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin. And I got what appeared at first glance, and I get them from time to time, we all do, but I got what appeared at first glance to be a campaign fundraising appeal from Congressman Zeldin. But as I read the email, it turned out not to be an appeal looking for campaign funds. And I was really impressed. Let me read to you a little bit of what Congressman Zeldin sent, sent out in this letter. He said, Dear Andrew, Long Island has been hit incredibly hard by COVID-19. As a campaign, we previously notified you of our decision to cancel our regular end-of-month re-election campaign fundraising and other campaign-related events. Lee suspended his normal schedule and is focused around the clock right now on assisting our local small businesses and local families, hospitals, state and local governments that are in the middle of the crisis. Now, usually, which is true, they usually do, we'd ask you to help out with our campaign fundraising as March comes to a close. Instead, Congressman Zeldin has canceled that plan for this end of month an end of quarter push, and we're asking you to help local charitable organizations. I was really impressed with that. I really was. And I want to give Lee Zeldin uh, a, a lot, just a big kudo for, for this. And then he lists uh, a list of local ministries uh, and charitable organizations here around Long Island. In his email, he gave you the names and the listings and the and the uh, websites. He's got Island Harvest here at www.islandharvest.org. Island Harvest aims to feed Long Islanders while reducing food waste. He's got the Lighthouse Mission here. Good friends of mine. I got a good friend, Howie Mann, who works over there at Lighthouse Mission as well as Pastor Ryan. And hey, Howie, if you if you're listening, here's a shout out for you. But the Lighthouse Mission feeds the hungry and helps the homeless in our community to overcome poverty and life purpose and live purpose-filled lives. And you can reach them at www.lighthousemission.com because they are, they are, they are looking for support, food, finances, as, as they reach out into their communities. And uh, past, uh, I was going to say Pastor Zeldin. No, he's not a pastor. Congressman Zeldin also mentioned uh, Village Chabad, which is a, a, a Lubavitch, a Jewish organization dedicated to the welfare of the Jewish people. And you could, if you want to, uh, help them out. You can village them at, uh, visit them at www.myvillagechabad.com. But again, he's got a whole list of, of folks here that, that people, you know, there's so many organizations looking for help, but some of these I do personally know, and I would, I would just want to encourage you to reach out to them. Everyone's in need right now. People are out of work, as you well know. But I, I just really want to thank Lee Zeldin and say, God bless you, Congressman Zeldin, for not just trying to, uh, you know, raise political fodder and campaign finances at this time, but having the wherewithal to say, you know what, don't give us your money. Reach out to these charitable uh, organizations. And we do want to say, God bless. God bless to all who are reaching out in practical ways to help those in need in this hour. Yes, God said in Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verse 1, God said, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Comfort my people. But getting back in line with some of the things I was sharing earlier, I want to say, God says, comfort my people, but but we're to comfort them with the word of truth. We, We dare not 
give God's people a false comfort or a false hope. God's people deserve truth. All people deserve truth, not just shallow, happy talk to make them feel better. You know, folks, it's it's just it just seems that like too many people seem to want only spiritual comfort food so they can be made to feel comfortable in this world. But this world is not our home. And Jesus said, he who endures to the end will be saved. He said, be faithful until death and you'll receive the crown of life. That's where our hope is. Hoping against hope. You know, I'll be honest with you. I've been praying a lot, asking God for direction and discernment and for real word and season in the season that we're in. And I have to tell you, you know, I don't know exactly what is going on, but I know something is going on. Will life return to normal after this so-called pandemic? I don't know. Perhaps. But I have a very strong sense, I really do, that no, nothing is going to be the same again after this. I really believe this is a harbinger of great change, this coronavirus pandemic, to whatever degree is real, and to whatever degree they're exploiting it, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. All these things are converging together. But all that aside, brothers and sisters, the Bible is a book of many things. But more than anything else, as I've often said, the Bible is a book of hope. From Genesis to Revelation, hope springs eternal, as the saying goes. And we are to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And because we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, we therefore, as Paul writes, also glory in tribulations. Now that's counterintuitive. We glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. In this present crisis, persevere in faith, brothers and sisters. Persevere in hope. Because perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. Paul writes in Romans, Now this hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You see, hope does not and will not disappoint if we can see things from a different perspective. Not the temporal or circumstantial perspective of this moment in time. Because if we look at the temporal circumstances of the moment, we are too easily brought into a place of frustration, disillusionment, or even despair. And that is why we need to see things from a different perspective, an eternal perspective. As the Lord taught us, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. We have great and precious promises, brothers and sisters. And like I said at the top of the broadcast, when Jesus said, he who believes in me, though he die, yet will he live. Do you believe this? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Do you believe this? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. <laughs> That's the hope of glory. 
That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus is coming back for his people. Jesus is coming back to take us out of this God-forsaken land. Oh, it's not really a God-forsaken land because God is trying to get people. He's shaking the world right now. He's shaking the world right now, trying to wake folks up. He hasn't forsaken this planet yet. But Jesus said, I'm coming again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Do you believe this? Are you, do you believe that God is able to perform that which he has promised, like Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned unto him as righteousness? Jesus said, I go and I prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Jesus is that way, the only way. Do you believe this? Thanks for tuning in, brothers and sisters. I'll be back next week. But keep it right here on Faith FM. There's still great Christian programming coming up 24-7. So don't touch that dial. 